Good afternoon, everyone. So, I have been studying sustainable agriculture at university, and it's quite a flexible course. So, I've been able to base most of my studies on vermiculture. Um, so, I would like to share some things about vermiculture with you. Basically, what we've found is that a worm product can facilitate everything you need in the soil uh, in a regenerative system. So it needs to be supported with a regenerative system. So what I'm going to take you through today is that um, a worm liquid is a biocontrol agent. So um, it acts like a pesticide and a fungicide. Uh, it regulates hormone function of plants. Uh, it can increase microbial diversity and mass in the soil, increase frost protection of plants, uh, increase photosynthetic rates of plants, uh, biodegrade toxic residues in the soil. Uh, there's a plant available nutrient component to it. Humic and fulvic substances. It also acts as a surfactant. Uh, it reduces temperature and water stress on plants and it increases organic carbon. So, worms don't we? Did we all know that? <laughs> uh, worms actually excrete a fluid, so they have a mu mucus around them and they consume soil. So um, when we feed the worms, we feed them large things like carrots and fish along with uh, seaweed and other minerals and soft rock phosphate and lime and straw and manure. But it's actually the microbes, the microbes that uh, break down the larger things and then the worms consume those microbes uh, and they excrete it in the castings. So, what we're actually collecting is the wash of all of that. So we're collecting the mucus that comes out and we're collecting the nutrients that come through, uh, that are washed out through those castings and also uh, the microbes, the diversity of microbes, uh, the humic and fulvic substances, the antibiotics, hormones and enzymes. So all of those things are collected into the liquid that we collect in the system. So what makes, um, what's important in making a quality worm liquid diversity of food. So that's the most important thing. Uh, like us, if we have a diversity of food, we have a diversity of microbes in our gut and that's what we want in a worm liquid. We want diversity of microbes. So the more diverse the food source, uh, the different microbes will break it down. So the more uh, diverse microbes will come out of the worm. Uh, the timing and the amount of feed um, is important. Uh, you need to uh, make sure that they've actually consumed the feed um, while you're actually collecting the liquid because you don't want to be collecting just manure water. You want to actually make sure that they've had that time to consume it and the microbes have broken it down uh, so it's gone through the worm. Uh, good drainage, you don't want it to drain too fast but you do need it to drip out slowly. You need good moisture uh, so the worms need to live in a moist environment uh, but you don't want it too moist because again you don't want it running out too fast. Um, clean filling apparatus, um, aeration of worm beds uh, and aeration in the storage as well uh, is really important. So in the worm beds you don't want the beds to be getting compacted down lower. So at the top you'll see that the worms are actually working through the food sources but down the bottom it can get compacted so we need to keep an eye on that. Um, protection from the birds. The birds are our biggest enemy. We have a, a, uh, a worm dog who we clap our hands and he, he gets the birds away. And growth trials as opposed to the, tri the um, analysis of the liquid is important because it's what the worm liquid actually does when it uh, is applied to the plant. So always we're looking at a worm liquid in, uh, with a plant and in a holistic system um, and also on a seed, uh, it works on a seed. So this was a study done on the actual liquid after I just said we don't look at the liquid but this is an important one. Uh, it's in a petri dish in a lab and what they did is they um, added a pathogenic fungus to the petri dish and you can see that the um, beneficial bacteria actually um, covered the fungi and they either outcompeted it for nutrients or they were uh, um, antagonistic towards it. Um, they found that the worm liquid produced a surfactant and ituran A. So surfactant is a, it's a surfactant um, and it's an antibiotic and ituran A, um, it has strong antifungal properties. So that's where we're saying it has antibiotics and antifungal properties. Um, what they did is they sterilised the worm liquid because they wanted to see is it the, the um, chemical factor of the worm liquid or is it the microbes that are making these products? 
um, and they found that the unsterilized worm liquid um, stopped the growth of the pathogenic fungus by 100% but the sterilised worm liquid didn't actually do much at all. So we know that the microbes are the most important thing in a worm liquid. We had a fourth year on a research student, Jenny, come from Sydney University and did some work experience with us. Um, and she did a research trial on Nutrisoil. Um, and what she found was that seeds that grew with uh, fertiliser showed 56% contamination after 14 days but those grown with Nutrisoil had no signs of contamination. So application of Nutrisoil on a plant can increase mycorrhizal fungi um, by over double. Um, and the important thing is uh, that mycorrhizal fungi are a part of the immune system in the soil and they're also part of the social network with Phil, which is what Phil talked about. So with the immune system, um, the fungi actually release chemicals um, into the soil that suppress and kill pathogens as well. So the bacteria do that and the fungi do that. Um, and they did a study in China um, that confirmed that tomato plants that grew separately uh, from each other and they're only connected by mycorrhizal fungi, um, when they had early blight disease introduced within a few hours, um, all of the plants started um, producing elevated levels of disease spe um, specific defense enzymes. So what that's saying is that they were connected and they were able to let each other know that there was a pathogen coming. So this is a difficult one. Um, Nutrisoil analysis, um, it doesn't tell the whole story and we're trained to ask for the analysis. We're, we, we always look at nutrient content and when I first start working with the customer, one of their first questions is, can I see the analysis? Do you have an analysis? And I'm like, yes, yes, we have an analysis, but um, it doesn't show the microbial content. So uh, sometimes when we get our analysis done of the liquid, we have no nitrogen in it. And that people would be shocked at that. And they would be like, well, that's not a very good worm liquid. It's actually a very good worm liquid because it has so much microbial diversity in it that the, the microbes consume the nitrogen and hold it in their bodies, the same as the carbon. So in the study um, that they did in the petri dish, what they found is that total nitrogen and, and carbon decreased over the time and nearly halved, um, and it was lost after 28 days. Um, the pH decreased over 28 days due to the production of organic acids. So that's again saying that there's high microbial pro um, life in a worm liquid. So adding in a cropping system, adding small amounts of nitrogen with a worm liquid actually works very well because that's how it works in the soil. You need uh, bacteria to convert uh, urea into uh, and, and the nitrogen that you apply into the forms that it needs to be taken up by the plant. So whilst there might not be a lot of nitrogen in Nutrisoil, in a holistic system, what you'll find is it builds a lot of nitrogen. And this goes back to what we were seeing at the Austin's property with the phosphorus. Um, but this is the Haggerty um, soil tests and nitrogen stocks were uh, nearly 30% higher in the biologically managed soil compared to the conventionally managed soil. And they were using two to three units of N with uh, the worm liquid and the compost extract. This year they actually didn't use any nitrogen because they've got to a point where their tissue tests and their soil tests are saying they don't need any nitrogen. So um, what was also very impressive is that um, the biologically managed soil um, had almost 8% increase in the nitrogen compared to the permanent pasture. So that's pretty impressive because permanent pasture, you think that that's where you can hold nitrogen and build it. You're, you're losing nitrogen when you're taking a lot from crops and when you're cropping into it. Um, but the biological nitrogen was actually building more than permanent pasture. We were talking about the organic nitrogen pool. So looking back at that nitrogen from the Haggerty soil test, that was actually um, available nitrogen on a soil test. What we're not taking into account is the organic nitrogen. Um, and the mycorrhizal fungi actually take up organic, organic nitrogen in amino acid form. So people often thought that they had to have a, 
a nitrate or an ammonium and then the, the mycorrhizal fungi would take it up, but it actually takes it in the amino acid form. There's results that show that. So worm liquid enhances hormone function. So uh, chemicals uh, have been proven to disrupt the hormone function of humans. They also disrupt the hormone function of plants. So if we can um, support that hormone function more, um, we can work a lot better with low chemicals, uh, low synthetic inputs. Um, so these hormones, they're, they're not nutrients, but they're chemicals um, that are in very small amounts. They're a bit like trace elements. Um, but they influence the growth and development of the plant so they can turn on, on and off and release it as the plant needs it in its situations. So things like abscisic acid, auxins, cytokinins, gibberellins, these are some of the type of hormones that, that you commonly hear of. Um, and they help with the things like formation of flowers, um, stem structure, leaf formation, um, fruit, grain ripening and even plant death. So. Um, Nutrisol has done a study where five litres of um, Nutrisol per tonne on the seed actually reduces the amount of abscisic acid in that plant. And that's because the seed, when it's germinated, is under less stress because it's come into a very biologically active environment. This is another study. Um, it was on a legume and um, a herb, and they compared uh, vermiwash. Um, it, it's called different things. You'll hear vermicast, vermiwash, um, vermiliquid, worm liquid, all of the literature has, has different ways of explaining it um, or, or naming it. So they compared vermiwash, 5% urea and control with nothing. Um, so the plant growth, so the root length, um, the root, the shoots um, and the ratio of leaves to plants show the optimum results in a vermiwash treatment compared to the 5% urea and the control. Um, the highest level of chlorophyll uh, was in the fresh leaves in the vermiwash treatment and that goes to show that um, a worm liquid increases photosynthetic capacity and we'll talk about that later on farm, how that happens as well. So you're increasing the bricks in your plant when you use Nutrisoil. Uh, the seedlings with the vermiwash foliar spray show the maximum level of protein and soluble sugars and starch in their tissues, which is again very exciting because when we think of protein, we think of high levels of nitrogen. Again, this is from Jenny, um, our research student, and um, she found that uh, application of a worm bed leachate showed a better root response compared to, uh, so the root length, compared to uh, nothing, the control, and a nitrogen and potassium fertiliser. She also did a study, and sometimes it doesn't come out as you actually think it would, um, but this study I thought I would show you that it actually regulates, a worm liquid regulates hormone function in plants. So IAA is a hormone that, that regulates growth and stress in plants. And what happened, if I read this correctly, because it, it actually reads a bit backwards, is that when you applied Nutrisoil, that was unsterilized, you had lower levels of IAA. So when you had sterilized nutrients, you had uh, sterilized um, worm bed leachate, there was higher levels of IAA compared to the unsterilized, suggesting that the higher auxin levels in the plant root, they actually limited the root development. So have I said that correctly? So yes, the root. The roots were, were shorter, but the auxins were higher in the sterilised, but uh, in the unsterilised, the roots were longer, but the auxin, there was less of the hormone in there. So it didn't increase the hormone, it regulated it to the environment that it needed to be. So Nutrisol biodegrades glyphosate in the soil. So uh, are people um, familiar with the maximum residue limit that we can have in our food? You can look that up on the internet and you can look up any chemical or pesticide and it can tell you how many uh, milligrams per kilogram are acceptable for a farmer to then sell that food. So currently for barley, uh, it's 10 milligrams per kilogram and for wheat, it's five milligrams per kilogram. Now last year we had Don Huber with us and um, he, he talked about glyphosate and he said there's only one thing that we can find at the moment that biodegrades 
glyphosate in the soil and it's from sauerkraut. So sauerkraut is like a pro probiotic for our gut, so it works like a probiotic in the soil. And he said it's the, the microbe is called Acetobacter and, and we're doing studies on it in Germany, I think it was in Germany, and, and we're trying to see if broadacre, we can apply this Acetobacter through sauerkraut and it can biodegrade the Roundup in the soil. And I said, Don, Acetobacter is in vermicast, it's in vermi liquid. And he said, well, I, I didn't know that. I don't know if he's an American. So that was pretty exciting. So he's actually taken those papers back now and um, he's going to be um, probably getting his students to do studies on that. And we're actually getting um, Ash Martin's lab in um, South Australia to, to do those studies for us as well. So that would be pretty exciting because we're seeing it in the paddock. This is the key thing. The Haggerty's do use glyphosate as a knockdown at the start when needed. This year they didn't need to. Um, because it wasn't necessary, but at times they do use it and they have no uh, residue of glyphosate um, in their grain when it's tested. So this is barley where they could have had 10 milligrams per kilogram, they didn't have any detectable limit. Yet they still use glyphosate, but they don't desiccate and they don't have GMO crops. Um, so all of these build-ups of glyphosate in the soil is where we're getting um, the large amounts of residue in our grain and in our soil. Um, I think I probably should mention that their soil is very biologically active because they use worm liquid, they use a, um, a compost extract, they use animals, which is a very big key in their system, and they have native grasses grow over summer, um, which um, hosts a lot of mycorrhizal fungi and also helps with building their nitrogen stocks over summer as well. So um, in a worm liquid, uh, the microbes when applied to a plant can nearly double um, the diversity and types of microbes. So um, we've just got some types of microbes that have been found in Nutrisoil. Um, it's not a complete list. Microbes switch on and off as necessary. So what you'll find in summer is different to microbes that you'll find in, in winter and it's different to microbes you'll find with different plants that you grow. But the key thing is here that most of these microbes are doing some type of protective role. And I think this is probably one of the biggest keys to Nutrisoil. Um, it really acts as a fungicide and as a pesticide in a natural form. So uh, photosynthetic bacteria, they're very important because they break down toxic residues such as um, pesticides in the soil. Uh, lactic acid such as um, lactobacillus, they're very um, strong biosuppressive compounds and they help control the harmful microorganisms. Actinomycetes produce an antibiotic compound um, that they suppress uh, pathogenic organisms. And there's actually been a study done where uh, actinomycetes increase a thousandfold when they go through the gut of the worm. Um, and fungi, uh, penicillium, uh, produce enzymes, antibiotics, and various growth regulators and trichoderma, which break down your organic matter in the soil. So these are the types of microbes that are, are in Nutrisoil and are working away in the soil as we apply them to the plant. Again, the mycorrhizal fungi will help uh, store water, it will help find water, it will help store water, and it will also help find nutrients and help store nutrients. And that will be increased by um, application of Nutrisoil. So humic and fulvic substances are made naturally by the worm. We've had that tested over in America. Um, uh, we also add half a percent of humate to Nutrisoil. Um, so the fulvic su substances open up the pores on the leaf of the plant um, and the humic substances actually hold and assist the nutrient exchange for the plant. So they're important things. Um, a plant actually takes up a um, follicular fertiliser more efficiently than what it does uh, from the soil. Um, so that's uh, very much in line with what Andre was saying, is that they collect their nutrients from their leaves more so. It's easier for them and they have to use more energy to collect it from the soil. They do both, but they do a lot through their leaves. So uh, Nicole Masters alerted us to this one and we, we had Nutrisoil tested and Pseudomonas florens is in Nutrisoil. And what this microbe does is it protects plants from frost. So a lot of microbes on the leaf of a plant actually cause the plant to freeze. 
Um, and then what a, a, a Pseudomonas filarens does is it bumps those guys off and then it takes over places on the plant and it allows the plant to uh, then be able to withstand temperatures several degrees lower without harm. So you see biologically healthy plants can withstand frost longer. It's not a silver bullet, but certainly helps with frost protection. And this is another test, that, an, another study that was done um, on the seedlings of tomatoes, where they um, exposed seedlings to temperature um, extremes and to low levels of, of water availability. Um, and in comparison with the control, seedlings uh, treated with a vermicast liquid um, improved their stem thickness, leaf area, uh, and their, just their growth in general at 30 degrees. Um, and at this temperature, the vermicast treated seedlings again showed more chlorophyll and total sugars. So it, it was increasing um, more uh, efficiently than the non-treated plants. Uh, and the number of leaves, stem thickness and shoot to root length for the um, lower level vermicast uh, treated tomato seedling, seedlings uh, was significantly uh, greater than the, than the control of those that were in a water stressed environment and not treated with a worm liquid. That's too hard to see, but that was just the results of that study. And I think we're coming up to lunch. So I'll just finish um, uh, with uh, me and my husband did this. Um, this was just a trial that we did at the Nutrisoil front paddock. And what we did is we did a holistic system. Um, we did uh, strip grazing. We, we didn't kill, we, we grazed down heavily. We did strip grazing and two um, multi-species cover crops. Um, we used the vermicast and the vermiliquid. Uh, and over a two year period, we were able to increase the organic carbon from 2% to 3.12 percent so again the water holding capacity of that 160,000 litres more and yes it is greener than other paddocks in the street so um, that was exciting to see so looking back um, we can see that a worm liquid um, acts as a biocontrol agent um, it regulates hormone function of plants uh, it increases microbial diversity and mass in the soil it increases frost protection of plants. It increases photosynthetic rate of plants. Um, it biodegrades toxic residues in the soil. Um, it is a plant available nutrient. Uh, it has humic and fulvic substances. It can act as a surfactant. And that's again, that's the oily substance of a worm liquid. So you don't actually have to put out a wetter with it. Worms make this surfactant, which is an oily substance. Um, reduces temperature and water stress and increases organic carbon in soil when it's in a holistic system and supported by all regenerative principles. So thank you very much.